Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometry, the tangent of the sum of two angles. Number 5, the tangent of A plus B. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com for pricing and ordering instructions of this entire cram series. And definitely tell your friends and classmates to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com if they too need to cram for Algebra 2. Um, this is also applicable in trigonometry and geometry, okay? So they too can inbox me for pricing and ordering instructions. Let's delve into the concept. The tangent of the sum of two angles. What is the formula for finding the tangent of the sum of two angles? This is a hit or miss because it's either you know the formula or you don't. So take a brief moment to think, and if you don't know, sit tight. We're gonna work through this together. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to write out your answer. And we find that the tangent of A plus B, any two angles, is going to be equivalent to the tangent of A plus the tangent of B divided by 1 minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. And you're probably like, what the heck? How do we get from this to this? Well, let's start with the basics. Um, the sign of any angle is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, okay? Or if you're on a Cartesian coordinate, it's just going to be the coordinate, the maximum coordinate, the y coordinate of the opposite side. So then you have that your tangent will be the sine divided by the cosine. And the cosine of an angle is the adjacent side ultimately divided by the longest side or the hypotenuse. And this essentially yields the tangent. The opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Let's take a look at this conceptually. So again, the sine is the opposite side divided by the measurement of the longest side. And in an effort to yield your tangent, you're going to divide the sine by the cosine, which is going to be the adjacent side with respect to the angle divided by the longest side or your hypotenuse, okay? And this equals um, your sine, the opposite over the longest side, times the reciprocal of the cosine because when you're, whenever you divide a fraction by a fraction, in essence, you're multiplying by the reciprocal of um, the divisor, okay? So the longest cancels, or the hypotenuse is canceled, and that's how you get opposite over adjacent, okay? Alrighty then. Thus, um, the sine over the cosine is equal to the tangent, okay? Alrighty then. And it makes sense that the sine of um, A divided by the cosine of A is going to be the tangent of A, as well as the sine of B over the cosine of B is equivalent to the tangent of B. Then we could say that the sine of A plus B divided by the cosine of A plus B is equivalent to the tangent of A plus B, okay? If you were to add the right-hand sides and the left-hand sides, you just combine the variables of interest in the brackets, okay? But if you watch some of my previous demonstrations or cram sessions, you would know that the sine of A plus B is equivalent to the sine of A times the cosine of B plus the cosine of A times the sine of B, and then we have that the cosine of A plus B, if you saw a previous cram session with this, 
um, is the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b, okay? And then you could leave it like this, but if you look at each term, the <laughs> kind of sort of greatest common factor is the cosine of a times the cosine of b because three terms in this expression share at least one of these terms. So we're going to divide through by the cosine of a plus b. Okay. And so when we do that, we get that the sine of a plus the cosine, plus the sine of b, sorry, over the cosine of a. Okay, let me start all over. The sine of a over the cosine of a plus the cosine, the sine of b over the um, cosine of b is equal to 1, because these terms cancel in the numerator and the denominator, minus the sine of a times the sine of b divided by the cosine of a times the cosine of b. Um, hence, that's how we get this here. We're back to the beginning, because this basically becomes the tangent of a plus b. The tangent of a times the tangent of b, sorry. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. I know this will help clarify some things for those people who have always been wondering how the heck do you get from here to there. All right, so remember that opposite over adjacent is just going to be sine over cosine. Okay, all right.